Greetings. We continue reading through the book of Hebrews for our midweek Plumbline devotional study, and we're up to chapter 5 in the book of Hebrews, and we're going to finish it off today with verses 11 through 14. But in order to get what we're talking about, I think we need to go back to verse 7 so we can catch the flow here. Verse 7 of chapter 5 of the book of Hebrews. In the days of his flesh, talking about Jesus Christ, he offered up both prayers and supplications with loud crying and tears to the one able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his piety. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became to all those who obey him the source of eternal salvation. Being designated by God as a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. And here's our passage for today concerning him. Now, when they say concerning him, they mean Melchizedek. And we're going to study Melchizedek uh, in chapter 7 of Hebrews. Concerning him, we have much to say and it is hard to explain. Since you have become dull of hearing, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God, and you've come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he's an infant. But solid food is for the mature, who, because of practice, have their senses trained to discern good and evil. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of his holy and precious word. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you paid attention to this passage here, and you read it yourself, verses 11 through 14, it is a slap in the face to those weak Christians who were, un who were well, they were right in the zone. They had a benefit in Jerusalem, after Jesus Christ had risen from the dead, and this is about 30 years later, when the Apostle James, the brother, the half-brother of Jesus Christ, was the head of the church of Jerusalem. And here they are now, after he was martyred, going sideways. And just like today, this, this could have been written for any Christian today, especially some in, in some of these uh, fancy pants, um, rock and roll churches, where everything is uh, concentrated on music and so on, and there's a lot of weakness there, where everybody, if they even want to get it all, are in the milk stage and don't have any solid food. So as we go through these verses here, we're going to see a, an, a, a really critical and, and scary parallel to today's world and today's uh, so-called believers. Okay, so... What, what, uh, what the Bible is saying here is that they wanted to teach, and we're going to talk about Melchizedek, but because these people are so dull, and they use the word dull here, the Holy Spirit used the word dull of hearing, he said in verse 12, by this time you ought to be teachers, but you have need for someone to teach you the basics of Christianity again, because you are so not paying attention, you're so not into it, you're so not a disciple of Jesus Christ, we got to start all over again. And that explains a lot about Christians today. When you have a newborn baby, over the first year of the baby's birth, his or her birth, you keep going to the doctor regularly. And there are certain uh, benchmarks that the baby has to achieve uh, over a certain period of time, vis-a-vis uh, 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 -vis, uh, weight, growth, and as, uh, as, as the weeks and months go on, teeth, teeth start to come in. And it's a beautiful thing. And, and you, you have those, those benchmarks there. And a lot of parents uh, recently have these big mats on the floor with, with the months, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and one year and so on. And they put the baby, they circle the month and the baby, and you can see the growth if you follow the pictures on Facebook or Instagram. And, and you can see the growth. 
So what, he's, what the Bible is telling us here is that Christians are just like that. Instead of we having a benchmark where we could actually see the growth of, of the baby Christian, these people never got past the uh, second month of, of, of growth. And how, what was the reason why, what are the, what are the signs of, of a Christian who never gets past the first or second month of being a baby Christian? Well, the first one is, if a Christian cannot, dist, uh, if a person sitting in the pew, let's put it this way, <laughs> if a person sitting in the pew on Sunday morning, um, Back before COVID, uh, there were, you know, churches were relatively full around the world and around America and so on. And mega churches were busting at the seams and the bands were playing and uh, the hands were in the air. And they had great worship music, uh, elevation worship over in North Carolina and, and so on. Uh, you got one in, in Texas, Gateway. They got great music. Um, but the Bible teaching, some of it is a lot of pop psychology. And the thing is, um, the people in the, because the, the people, the young people, old people, no matter what the age the person is in the audience or the congregation, they have a hard time distinguishing between what is biblical truth and what is uh, straight out of the pastor's head or some pop psychology uh, movement he belongs to because you know why? They don't have Bibles in their hands when they come to church on Sunday morning. And technology and the, and the misuse of technology, of putting Bible verses up on the screen and not encouraging people to bring the Bible to church and, and a pastor who uh, may have it on an iPad or a phone. I remember back in uh, 2009, we were in Colorado Springs and there was New Life Church by, led by Ted Haggard uh, who, who started a bunch, of, uh, a bunch of movements that went uh, well, led people astray. And then he fell because of a sex scandal. Ted Haggard had all his pastors reading out of blackberries. Nobody in the church, but a thousand people there on a Sunday morning, had a Bible with them. If, if you do not have a Bible, when you come to church, just like in the, in the old days, when you come to church with a Bible, even some of the people standing there, they went to church as adults with Bibles, and they don't anymore because the pastor's uh, putting up a passage on the wall, and you, you get a, a, attuned to that week after week. Month after month, year after year, you stop reading it in the church. The next thing you know, you never, ever read it at home. If you were barely reading it before that at home, after, after being indoctrinated like that, where everything's on the wall and the pastor's reading it off a phone or an iPad or, or, or a laptop, you don't read it at home anymore either. So therefore, you, if you don't have that biblical knowledge and, and that daily diet of, of, the, of the word, of solid food, you're basically still in the milk stage. If you think about the growth of a baby at a pediatrician, you're still in month month one or two. You, uh, so, the, so he's telling us here in Hebrews chapter uh, 5, verses 11 and 12, you should be in month 6, 7, or 8, going on towards one year, and then, then and growing into a toddler, and then uh, in, into a, a teenager and, and an adult, and maturing in the faith. Instead, we got to go back now to the beginning and teach you the basics of Christianity. And it's not just the pastor's fault that, and, and some church leaders and the church Sundays, marketing gurus who, are, who uh, teach these churches to, to be a better, um, uh, well, <laughs> better marketing uh, agents to reach the communities. It's, it's in the home because if, if if a person grew up in a home that where the parents don't read the Bible, where God is not the head of the home, uh, a lot of single parents, God bless them for that, uh, don't have time to read but when they should because a, a lot of single parents in the past raised godly children as well. But if there's not that thing at home, I'm not talking about saying grace before meals. That, is, that, that should go without saying. But biblical instruction... Um, even in the smallest way, will go a long way to preparing a kid's heart and a kid's mind for when they go to youth group, when they go to church. And then the big test when they go to ch school five days a week to be indoctrinated in godless evolution 
and all the other things that political correctness that, that people throw at them where they can't even wear a T-shirt with an American flag or a Bible verse on it or Jesus, they will know how to handle it. Instead, a lot of people back backtrack and we get what we have today. So we have a lack of, and then another way that uh, that, that we see the, the fall and, and, and the weak Christians we have who only know about milk and not solid food is, is the improper view of worship. Well, some other time we're going to look at what true worship is in the, in the biblical sense. But um, if, your, if your idea of worship is a rock and roll band and, uh, and standing in front of the stage, which is actually, or, or the pulpit, you know, for, for old-fashioned guys like us, and uh, rocking out and nothing wrong putting your hands in the air, because uh, lifting up holy hands is biblical. But if that is all that you think worship is, we got a problem, Houston. So we have the public school uh, teaching evolution. We are teaching, taking people away from God. We have uh, the pastors reading from uh, electronics and, and screens and things on the wall. And he might, he might be reading on the Bible, but he's not encouraging people to bring the Bible to church. And we have homes that, don't, uh, that are not putting out godly instruction to their kids. And no wonder um, we have uh, people who need to be brought back to the stage of milk so they can be trained and have the teeth developed so they can start eating solid food as written in the scriptures. Another thing we got to watch out for is this, selfishness. People, be, people remain baby Christians because of selfishness. Even people who've been there for a long time, even deacons, even pastors. It's about me, 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 me. You know that song by Toby Keith, I want to talk about me, I want to talk about I? Well, and sometimes it's worse than that in the Christian world, especially people who are heading up ministries. It's about them. It's about what they do. And, uh, and you don't get in their way, and uh, you'll be fine. Well, that's not what Jesus said if Jesus said, if you want to be a disciple, you have to take up your cross, die to yourself daily, and follow me. It's about dying to yourself, denying yourself. I don't mean denying yourself food and, and a good life. I'm, talk, I'm talking about selfishness, denying yourself, and thinking of others. This whole Christian life about uh, biblical teaching, about biblical service, and all and biblical outreach is about others. Bringing others to Christ. We can't take anything to heaven except another person in the sense that we can plant the seed, we can lead them to Christ, we, get, we can disciple them, we can mentor them. And, and along the way, that when we pass on and we prayed for them all through the whole thing there, when we go to heaven, we pray that we will see them in heaven. And what a beautiful day it will be. With my Jesus, I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. So, that's what he's saying here in Hebrews chapter 5, 11 and 12. So, in verse 13, he, uh, he says, For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness. If you don't grow, how would you know God? The only way to know God and to know his uh, purpose is, is to study his word. Some people say, well, you know, the Christmas story is boring and all that. I mean, we know, we know uh, in the days of Caesar Augustus, uh, he, he said a decree that all the world to be taxed. Okay. Well, have you ever studied what that means? Um, Bethlehem. Have you studied Bethlehem? If, if you are, uh, if really, you really uh, grounded and, and seeking after God after he saved you because uh, you can't save yourself uh, in your unsaved state you never pursue God because, uh, because pursue God sorry because I know that uh, any Christian any, any born again Christian knows that we weren't looking for God when he saved us he knocked us down to our face and, and then on and our knees and our backs and then the only way we had to do was to look up and say Lord help us Lord save me he, in my, as I mentioned before in another video, uh, God gave me a choice and, and, and my two hands, literally. So the only way you can know that God who saves you by his grace, and the only way you can walk and grow in wisdom and knowledge and understanding is to spend time with him 
and to go past the milk stage. So we to go back to our proverbial baby here we talked about in the beginning. We need to get past the milk, and we need, we need to get to six months, nine months, when we go back for our checkup and the benchmarks are looking good and, 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 and the baby's putting on weight and the teeth are coming in and then a year we get to get our formula and breast milk and then we can go to whole milk at year one. And then the, 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 uh, the, the Gerber baby foods will start coming in. Then you can start by giving Cheerios and, and, and a little, little, little bit of solid food. Eventually, by the end of year two or so, you, you can start giving the baby carrots and stuff like that. So it's a beautiful thing. Verse 14, but solid food is for the mature. Solid food is for the mature who, because of practice, have their senses trained to discern good and evil. If, um, now, we, we, so we talked about baby Christians and, and how you get that way. Let me give you an example. Um, I'm, I'm a Gideon. I passed out Bibles. I've been a Gideon for, since 1995. Uh, we passed out Bibles uh, in colleges, high schools, and um, anywhere. We put Bibles in hotels. You know, how many times you go to a hotel, you pull the drawer by the, uh, by the nightstand, and, and you look in there. Oh, I do it now because I'm a Gideon. Make sure there's a Bible there. And, and so on. And I know people who have been saved from Gideon Bibles in strategic places. We were passing our Bibles one time in a college campus, and uh, we named the campus. And uh, I approached, uh, uh, we're, we're designated in certain places in the public square on public sidewalks so we don't interfere with the, uh, the traffic. We don't, we don't uh, violate any rules or anything. And, and the police know we're there. The campus knows we're there. We have permission to be there. Um, this young lady was passing by. I offered her a New Testament. I said, would you like to have one of these, uh, Gideon New Testament? She said, what is this? I said, uh, it's a New Testament, uh, it's uh, from the Bible. So I said, um, she said, so what, what does it do? Um, so I, I opened the New Testament, I turned to the back of the Gideon New Testament, and there's a, there's a series of helps there from uh, A to Z, anxiety, d depression, um, uh, all sorts of things, and maladies, and joy, e even good things, joy, um, how to, how to handle situations and stuff. I said, well, you're going to be in this campus a long time uh, for your four-year degree. You, want, you might want to keep this. So when you, get, when you feel like you need some help, or some encouragement, some comfort, turn to the back of this, find the Bible verse, read it, and, and ask God to speak to you. She said, well, I go to church. I said, I said, I'm thinking, you go to church, you don't know what the Bible is. You don't know what the New Testament. She asked, she did ask me what the New Testament was. And I, and I got to come talking a little longer and found out she was baptized. Now, she was baptized, but she didn't know what the Bible was. She did not know what salvation was. What happened was she followed a bunch of people when a certain pastor in, in, in a big church uh, for, uh, invited a whole bunch of people down and baptized them in water and had them read, repeat a statement after him and told them they were saved because they got baptized. That is worse than a baby Christian. That is a, an unsaved person who needs salvation, who needs to be converted, who needs to understand repentance and faith and be brought to, to, uh, to salvation. That is not what we're talking about. But that's an important thing, and, that's, and that we have to look out for that. We have to pray in the, that the Lord put us in the people like that, put us in their paths so we can lead them into the path of righteousness. So what uh, verse 14 is telling us here Solid food is what we should be looking for. If we know any baby Christians, it's our obligations to pray for the Lord to give us an opening because we don't just go up to them and start saying, hey, you know, I really think you're, you're immature, you don't know what you're doing, you don't read the Bible, you don't have one. No, you can't do that. You, you invite them up for some coffee and donuts or something, a piece of pie, if you could find a restaurant open, or when things reopen in, in the future, or oh, you give them a call, you send them a card. I mean, I know cards are old-fashioned, but there's something about receiving a card and a handwritten note in the mail that encourages you and makes you smile. And uh, I still get letters occasionally, not as many as before. Uh, still, we still got Christmas cards. I send out Christmas cards by the dozens. It's, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. It's, I love doing it. It takes hours, but it's, it's a labor of love. Uh, and 
if you do that and, and you start reaching out to the, to the person who was, is still in the milk stage or maybe in puree in pureed baby food stage and you want to get them to a mature spiritual Christian lifestyle, you have to reach them and love them to Jesus even more. And you find out that you ask them for the testimony. That the best thing, way, the best way to break an ice is to ask them, so tell me um, about yourself. Tell me what the Lord's done for you. Tell me how your day is going. And then you, you use due diligence. You stay at it. You may or may not get a breakthrough, but you, also, you, you stay at it. And then uh, the Lord will open up some doors or not. But if he does, you walk right through it. And even for people who've been in the faith a long time, um, even people who read the Bible daily are going to have trouble. Um, all of us uh, went through uh, trials and tribulations and health issues and so forth and so on. And, but, you know, the, the thing about being a mature Christian is that you and Jesus are going to get through it. He who perseveres to the end will be saved. Uh, behold, I have overcome this world. In this life you'll have many trials. I'm in tribulation, said the Lord Jesus Christ. But behold, I have overcome this world. Uh, he, and he is with us until the end of time. Uh, you know, what? Um, several uh, I think it was the last few years, there is a Bible app called YouVersion. YouVersion. You, uh, most of us have that on, their, uh, iPhone, on our phones. And there are different reading plans there. I encourage you to join a plan. Um, some of these plans are, are very short, like three days, five days. You can read the Bible for three days. And it, it might be a devotional. It might be a Bible passage. Uh, well, I did a, a check on Google one time. What is the most popular Bible verse in the world? We know, um, uh, we might say John 3.16 because we see it on television in the end zone on a football game. We see a... Uh, Tim Tebow or somebody put it on their eye there, John 3, 16, or on the, on the football cleats. The most popular Bible verse in the world is Joshua 1, 9. Believe it or not. Joshua 1, 9. Let's, let's read that. Have I not commanded you? Uh, here's God talking to uh, general his, his general, Joshua, who's about to take the people into the promised land. Because Moses has died and gone on to be with the Lord. And now Joshua's got uh, uh, two million or so uh, Israelites with him. And he's got the, he's got the armies of Israel uh, that he's leading. And he's, he's scared. I mean, you're going to be leading um, an army from the desert in the wilderness and through a bunch of pagans and warriors everywhere and, and people waiting, waiting to ambush you. High mountains, all kinds of things all around you. And then... Uh, you're scared. And here's what God says. God says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Be strong or courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is, be, is with you wherever you go. The most popular Bible verse in the world, according to you version, which has had uh, almost half a billion downloads the last time I checked, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be heading towards a billion pretty soon. Now, in places like China, they, um, uh, it's, it's been blocked because they don't want the Bible in China. Um, they hate God, and they hate America, and they hate everything except Chinese communism and, and, and atheism and, and, uh, and tyranny. So, but God is different. God is just letting them go for the time being until he's ready for uh, to take, take him down. The most popular Bible verse in the world, be strong and courageous. Do not tremble. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You will not know that if you don't become mature in the faith. If you don't start eating solid food. If you don't spiritually grow into the man or woman God has called you to be. That's what it, uh, this verse means here, verse 14. But solid food is for the mature who, because of practice, have their senses trained to discern good and evil. So when you study the scriptures, when you pray, even in the hard times, when you worship, when you worship and you praise him in the storm, 
he will be with you and he will tell you, do not be afraid, be strong and courageous. I'll be with you. You will not know that in the hard times, in, in the lockdown times, in the, and even in the beautiful times like Christmas. You will not know that if you're still drinking milk and not eating the pure ribeye steak of the Word of God. So we wrap up chapter 5 of Hebrews this way with this beautiful thought and a beautiful encouragement from Joshua uh, chapter 1 verse 9. Next week we start chapter 6 of the book of Hebrews and the heading on this is the perils of falling away. Now so th these are some warnings for us to stay strong, to grow in the Lord, do not personally fall away and then make sure that no one around us falls away as well. But as a caveat, you cannot fall away if you were truly born again. Because God does not lose those who are truly saved. Those who were falling away were, were seed that was planted on the rock and not in solid, fertile ground. Stay in the Word. We continue reading through the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, next time. God bless.